Hello everyone and welcome to the last episode of the 10 minute modeling challenge that I will be filming in this room. Well, I think so anyway, because tomorrow we'll be getting the keys for the next house that we're going to move to. So we've lived in this house for one year now since we moved to Australia and we want to look around a little bit and we're excited to try a new house in a new neighborhood. So we're moving uh, just about five minutes in that direction uh, to an even steeper hill actually. So it's going to be a little bit more exercise when I go up and down, which is going to be great. Actually, I'm going to be driving the car most of the time, so probably zero exercise, but Still, it sounds uh, like it's going to be a nice place. So I'm really excited. So uh, that's going to be happening. And I'm, we, we still have this house for another two weeks. So it's a bit of an overlap. But I think that I'll be recording the next episode in the other house. So this is... I probably wasn't lying when I said that this might be... Or well, I said it was going to be the last one in this room. So I better stick to it. So hopefully that I'll get the internet to work. The internet to work in the new house as well. And it should be connected. And it should hopefully be fiber again. Otherwise I'll panic because I cannot go back to anything else than fiber. It needs to be high speed up and down. And even to Europe, it seems to be working pretty decently these days, but I, that's beyond my control anyway. But I think it's only two hop, like through Singapore or something like pretty crazy. So that's uh, gonna be happening. I'm gonna be literally after this episode tomorrow, get the keys and then pack everything down and then shift all the stuff. We haven't got a tremendous amount of stuff because uh, we moved from Sweden with only 13 suitcases for a family of five. So whatever we've got now is stuff that we had to panic purchase because we rented an unfurnished house. So we had to look on Ikea. I had to sit for like, I don't know, two weeks solid and just assemble a lot of Ikea furniture. So now we're gonna be moving that along with the washer, dryer and, uh, uh, and fridge because in this country, when you move into a different house, that doesn't come along with it. <laughs> so I'm pretty used to the way it works in Sweden, a fridge and a freezer and uh, washing machines, everything like that stays in the house, which is pretty convenient. But in this case, we have to bring it all. So that's going to be interesting. But we've got a bit of a moving company to help us out with that. <laughs> all right. So what else is happening? I'm uh, reading a book. How about that for the first time in my life? Oh, well, actually not true uh, 100% because I did read Rainbow Six in uh, the late 90s because I like the game. So I thought I'd have to read the book. I love that one. And then I've just not read since then. First of all, I'm reading a game design book that I got recommended. So I'll be able to give it a little review on that one because I need to learn a lot about game design. It's not as easy as making uh, just technically making a game. So here's a bit of a tip for you. If you're interested in making games, a lot of the courses out there focus very heavily on just uh, like how do you use Unity? How do you get a thing to move? How do you jump? How do you do a platformer? How do you do a first person shooter? How do you do a racing simulator game? But very few actually focus on the fact that you know, it should really be a fun game. It's taken me about 20 years to realize that because uh, it's very easy during like 15 Ludum Dares that I've done. I've learned it the hard way that it's very easy to put together the game and you go, oh, this might be fun. And then you get the feedback from players going, nah, it's not really <laughs> that fun. And then you actually play it yourself and you go, you're right, this sucks. It's pretty bad. <laughs> So I'm uh, really wanting to up, uh, level up my skills on the game design. So I've learned a lot through the journey of Lion War as well, because uh, my co-dev there, he's uh, really good when it comes to the balancing and the game design and why things should and should not be in the game. And I hope to, to be able to adapt uh, a lot of that thought process. And I've learned a lot of the stuff not to do as well. For example, don't make a game that doesn't have single player like everyone told us not to do, and we've learned it. <laughs> well, still, we prefer the multiplayer part, but if you want to have a, a commercially successful game, then you should probably implement single player and listen to what people say. <laughs> Problem for me reading is that I fall asleep all the time, and I've got the Kindle version, and Kindle version sucks. Kindle app sucks. And I was really surprised because I thought since it's been about 10 years since I saw Kindle and I thought surely it must have improved super good text to speech and everything like that. I can just download the book and listen to it and they've disabled the feature. You cannot uh, actually enable it anymore because I think they just want you to buy a Kindle device instead. But I don't want to do that because I've already got a phone and I've got I, I'm, I vowed not to get too many electrical devices. Am I recording? Yeah, <laughs> so I'm not going to buy a Kindle app. I just want to be able to read it on my phone and I want to be able to switch on text to speech on the PC version it has text-to-speech and I enabled that and I thought I'll listen on my PC then how about that it's tough to bring along but at least I could sit down here and listen to it and if you want to have a book read by Stephen Hawkins it's an excellent thing because I don't think they updated their speech synthesis engine since like like 1980s or something so I don't recommend it unless uh, you're actually reading a book written by Stephen Hawking maybe that could be good but I don't want to listen to all the books like that it's uh, not good not recommended <laughs> let's just stick to the news as well Blender version 4.0 is coming as well. Exciting, huh? And I'll uh, summarize exactly what's exciting me about Blender 4.0. With that said, 
let's move on to something else because I couldn't actually find anything that interested me in version 4.0 of Blender. And uh, it seems to be it's like UI tweaks and uh, some uh, basic rigging things and maybe a lot of the stuff with geometry nodes, which I don't really use because I haven't found a lot of use of the geometry nodes yet. I like to customize my low poly stuff and just stylistically model stuff. Even though I'm into procedurally generating things, I haven't been able to do anything that I necessarily want to do with geometry nodes. So I'm not super excited about uh, 4.0 yet, but maybe I will be. Maybe someone will correct me and go, hey, you should check this out. But, so if you know something that I don't and that you think would interest me, go ahead, put it in the description. One more update as well, since we're on the topic of intros that are way too long for a 10 minute video. Check out the ghost behind me. It's the, it's the Pac-Man ghost. And last week it caused uh, cray, cray, crayons. It didn't cause crayons. It caused chaos with my uh, white balance because I had it on auto white balance, which I know you're not supposed to have, but I thought nothing is changing in the room. Well, the ghost is shifting colors. So I look like an Oompa Loompa half the time. And then I look like a ghost myself half the time. But I think I've fixed it now because I fixed the white balance. So it should be fixed now. And hopefully that ghost behind me should just shift colors instead like the way it's meant to be doing. I'm actually also reading another piece of text and uh, I should probably not uh, mention anyone here by name, Gisela. I still, well, actually I can't really say your name, but I'm really excited to read what you've got cooking there. I know it's not sci-fi, is it? Well, I call it sci-fi, but it's like a uh, fiction anyway. I actually really enjoyed reading it. So keep up the good work and keep that going because I want to read the complete thing now. I'm, I'm hooked onto your story. So keep up the great job on that one. I'm really excited to read more what you've got going there. All right, so I think that's pretty much sums up uh, what I had to say. And that's all I had to say about that. Maybe some people actually came to watch the modeling. So I'm going to be jumping on the Discord challenge again. The weekly Discord challenge has been going on for well over a year now. And thanks to Arvid, who's relentlessly putting up new themes and collecting all the stuff collecting it into a git repo and he's waiting for me to create a video where I'm going to go through it and I'm panicking now because there's so many submissions there over like 50 weeks that I haven't gone through so I don't really know how to tackle it but I'm gonna probably build up my courage and tackle it at some point in the new house when we move there and maybe I can't really go through all the submissions but hey he's done it so good that it's got preview images so maybe I can select the best of so if you've been participating in the discord challenge there stay tuned because I'll create a video about it and maybe your image will be reviewed and uh, I'll get some feedback some criticism should I be harsh should I be kind should I be both I don't know I'll figure it out <laughs> so I should criticize my own junk sometimes as well because half the stuff I make look uh, hideous so, but I'm not afraid to say that just look at my thumbnails from the 10 minute modeling challenge but then Hey, if you haven't followed me before, this is where it comes in handy to just fo focus yourself on 10 minutes because then you've got an excellent excuse. Ex excellent. Because you can say, hey, I did that in 10 minutes. What can you expect? What else have I been doing? Well, I thought it was going to go a lot faster, but I spent apparently 35 hours roughly modeling interior objects for the low poly packs. And they're compatible with the crispy, cr crisply <laughs> characters mini. So now I've got crisply interiors modern. Really like backwards with the naming there, but it's crispy interiors is the collection. And then it's the modern because I realized I have to do fantasy packs or sci fi and cyberpunk in the future as well. So I've created this one. It took me about 35 hours because I know that it took about 35 hours because I recorded the whole process and then I turned it into a time lapse that I played at four times the speed and that turned into about seven, seven and a half hours. So if my math is correct, which it probably isn't, well, maybe it's 30 hours or whatever. So I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm excited about that one because I imported all the objects and created a little demo scene inside of Unreal Engine. And uh, Unreal Engine is really cool because it actually works extremely good now. I got Nanite to work and then I also got uh, Lumen, which is doing beautiful work actually with the emission. So with the Infancia Pixpal texture that you might be using now, hopefully, if you haven't, just check out the link in the description and go grab it because that emission works extremely good in uh, Unreal Engine. So the Lumen just picks up all the emissive surfaces and actually uses it pretty much as a light, but without any shadows. But it, I am really happy with the way it looks. So I'm excited about that one. So that pack I'll be releasing onto my website and I've also got some other channels where I'll be releasing it. One of them being the unit asset store. And then when the fab store is coming from Epic later on, I'm going to be releasing it there too. And I'll also give it to my hero tier on my Patreons as well. Just need to finalize the packaging and then uh, launch it and then move on to the next pack. All right, then. so I know you've been waiting a lot for the modeling now, but I just want to say one more thing, actually, and that is uh, I had a, a few more questions about Ultranova. So earlier, a few months ago, I released some teasers about Ultranova and I developed that prototype that was going to be the full game inside of Unity. And since then, I've realized I actually love the way that Unreal Engine is presenting all the graphics and uh, the way I can just cram all the polygons in there. So I've been learning behind the scenes pretty much uh, Unreal Engine to the point where I'm starting to feel quite comfortable now, at least with the, with the way I can do the graphically and 
know, the graphic appearance and stuff. I'm still learning a bit of C++ and uh, the blueprint still still got a long way to go, but I'm at a point where I can soon start to actually assemble what I had in Unity into Unreal Engine, and then I'll be building it from there. So I'm really excited about that one. And behind the scenes, it's also been a huge process to update the game design document because uh, I, I have to whisper now, because uh, one thing that is not popular uh, amongst my subscribers is AI. And if I say AI, I lose subscribers. I, that's why I'm whispering that. And when I created a video thinking that it, this is going to be popular because I said, I'll, I ask uh, chat GPT to help me make a game. And then <laughs> it didn't really, it wasn't that popular. And I, I think I, I understand why, because it's like everyone's doing that. And then, well, we were discussing it in the Discord and it's actually not really that good <laughs> to come up with a game design because it can provide some useful hints. But if you're expecting it to create a sci-fi story or a fictional story, it's just going to left and right grab stuff from all over like existing stories and it won't tell you. It'll sound confident like it's coming up with something on the fly. But it turns out like the names are taken from this one, names of the planets is taken from this, the story plot is from this uh, either game or series or sci-fi or book or novel. And you don't know what it comes from. So people will be able to recognize that. So again, I shouldn't name drop here, but but Gizilra, that's what I'm going to say, is helping me with a really cool story. So I'm I'm super excited to share more about that. So we've been working in the game design document a lot. So thumbs up. Uh, thanks a lot for your help so far. I'm really eager to actually put all the stuff that you helped me with there and straighten the story out. It's a really cool plot now. It's got a lot more twists and characters and it's, everything's strung together nicely. We still have some work to do on that front, but I'm really excited. I think it's going to turn out to be a really cool platformer now. It's going to have some swingbacks to Tarkin 2 style because I love that era of gaming. I like the sci-fi part of it, the robot style character. I like the glowy neon firing balls and, and then I like the music style and everything like that. So it's going to have a lot of those elements, but a lot of new fresh contents as well. So in the form of a narrative, that's going to be way better than anything I could have come up with. In Ultra Nova, there's going to be a load of drone enemies. And the theme this week in the 10 minute, not in the 10 minute modeling challenge, in the Discord is actually drones. You can make either one or more. And I'm going to try to wake, wake, make one drone here. So a drone it is. And I'm going to be modeling it right here, right inside Blender 3.6. Now, no need to go to 4.0 beta because uh, I know it's a lot of hype, but I don't need that. I don't need crashes anymore. Anyway, so I'm going to stick to 3.62 for a while. Ready? Steady? Go. We're counting. Yep, we are. All right, so I'm going to do uh, Shift D to duplicate the top face there. Move that to the side. Let's do Automator, actually, because I want to be able to have the drone arms here. And then this one, I'm going to do E to extrude and Control R. Oh, no. Do you know what? I'm going to make this. I'll do my usual check. Right click, subdivide, and let's go circle. X and then dissolve limited and then E to extrude and here's going to be Alt Z. Well, it's not going to be there. <laughs> I to inset and right click and let's do a bridge faces. So there we go, our little cylinder that I want. And then I'll E to extrude this one. S to scale. Let's scale on the Z axis maybe. And I can't remember what the drone looked like, but it's okay. Um, and then I'm going to put uh, the propeller thing in the center here. Shift E to duplicate. F to uh, just do that one alt n and flip the normals do i need to do that no probably not okay but still and uh, how should i do the propellers here i'll do s to scale e to extrude and l to select the link and just grab this one on the left here and move it up to here some gray color there we go and then alt right click f3 and then just do checker deselect and alt e extrude long face normals there we go have I got back facing on? Okay, that's not supported there. Ah, I thought it was flipped. So Alt N, flip. There we go. Go back. I actually like to model the, in this view these days. I'll Z and material preview there. I don't know why. So we should do uh, uh, control. Okay, so here's the stupid thing. Why am I modeling this one like this? I uh, should not really be modeling <laughs> all the blades at once. You should do like a, an array modifier or something like that, but never mind. I'll try anyway. Alt S to scale, scale on the Z axis. Uh, maybe scale on... Okay, and I'll do period, individual origins, period, and go normal. Scale on the Y axis. Uh, Alt E to extrude long face normals. And maybe I'll do rotate on the Z axis. Uh, there we go. I actually want this low poly look, so I'm just going to keep them like that. E to extrude, S to scale, and I'll do some E to extrude, S to scale there as well. I think that's pretty good. That's going to be it for the little drone propeller thing here. Anyway, it actually needs to be attached somewhere. <laughs> e to extrude, should it be from the top or the bottom? The bottom, I guess. 
that's to, oh no, I won't scale that on yet. I'll move it up here to extrude, and then we'll just do some sort of a connection here. Alt Z, that'll do E to extrude. And well, we can just bring it into there, right? That's it. So that makes a little bit more sense. And then we'll do E to extrude S to scale there for a little bit of feature. How am I doing? Seven minutes. Okay, so I've only got this thing. I can uh, maybe I'll do a little bit more detail here as well. I don't know what to do yet, but let's scale this down. Alt select there. Uh, let's do I to inset, Alt S to scale them down. Then I don't know what to do here, but let's just punch a hole here or something. No, we shouldn't. I'll just do like a little I to inset and Alt S to scale along normals. That should do. That'll be okay, I think. Some darker color here for some reason. I want that. Have I got proportional on? No. All right. L to select the linked, G to move it. Okay, now I need to L to select this linked as well. That's it. And then I'm going to put this one here. Rotate it maybe. Okay, I need to do comma and do global period medium point rotate. And should I do, I think I might do six just because I can duplicate them so fast. Shift D. Why just have four? That's boring. So I'm going to be doing it like this instead. Yeah, that's it. I have no idea why I do that, but never mind. So we'll bring this one up here and then what am I doing? Five minutes. So half the time is done. Um, e to extrude. Well, let's go E to extrude here. This is a bit like a spaceship, I guess. Scale Z, E to extrude, S to scale. I think I'll scale this one too. I have no idea really what to do here. So I'll just have to randomize a little bit. E to extrude, S to scale. I think I want to have like E to extrude. For some reason, I feel like having something that pokes out like this. And then I think I want to have something, control R. Loop cut can never go wrong. Just add some more detail there. And I should probably LL to select the link here, move this one forward. And I think I'm going to do like some indentations here. So I'll control R to loop cut here, control R loop cut here, control R loop cut there, control R loop cut here. And then we'll just do shift select these, I to inset, Alt D to extrude long face normals. And then I'll color this one a lot darker. So that looks uh, a bit strange, but I think it'll, it'll be okay. Then Alt select here, scale on the Z axis. And here I should do as well, maybe I want to have uh, something the house is like a camera here as well. I to inset, B for the boundary in the center, Alt E to extrude long face normals. G, get this one to a dark color there again. And then I'm just going to do some sort of a lens here. So this is going to be a problem because I'm going to be Actually, I'll do two lenses, because that's going to be easier than one lens, since I'm in mirror mode here. So I'll grab this one, Shift D to duplicate it, but I have to disable here on the modifier. I have to clipping off so I can just move that into there. So let's, why not make two camera lenses here? Stereo. Yeah, it's filming stereo, so it's good for VR, right? Right click, subdivide, circle, scale it down, clipping back on, because I always forget it, but not this time. G to move it to a a brighter gray. Maybe I'll do metal out of these later on. So I'll do E to extrude and it's going to be filming downwards because this is like an, a surveillance one. So surveillance. Why can I not say that word? Alt E, extrude long face normals again. Uh, e to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude and I to inset and E to extrude. It looks, looks like a pair of binoculars. Why not? So should we do like a focus ring as well? Automated of course. So I to inset, Alt S to scale, and control plus and do that a little bit darker as well and then grab this one and i forgot to press x and do limited dissolve e to extrude s to scale e to extrude looks a bit quirky <laughs> looks like a pair of binoculars but this turned out to be like a comical one instead but let's go for it i've got three minutes to go so i'll just add some quirky details here maybe something like this and i think i'm gonna add a pair of eyes for navigation as well this is gonna be more like the uh like the the stuff that it uses to navigate, I think. Alt E to extrude, because we make can make these shine a little bit instead. So I'll do scale this one down. Okay, no, I don't want to do that. GG to slide it down. G, okay, I'll have to just freebase this one a bit. It's not called freebase. I don't know what it's called. Free, free, freebie it or something. Okay, that's no good, but I'll do like this. And I know I'm twisting the polygons now, probably a big time, but never mind. We're gonna do it. G 
G and GG to slide this one. And now I'm just gonna do I to inset and Alt D to extrude long face normals, scale that one down. And this one we can go and miss it, right? So should we do like green eyes, I think, or red, probably evil red eyes. There we go. And then I still got two minutes to go. So we have to do something about this hideous top here. And fins can never go wrong. Uh, unless you're from Sweden, then fins are uh, not, well, they're neighboring countries, so it's pretty cool. Uh, we'll do comma, scale, y, and scale, y, well, I said y, but I did x. So, e to extrude, and s to scale, and I'm, I'm running out of time, so I'll just have to put some stuff here now. So here's going to be some sort of a hatch. We'll do, actually, should I do this way? i to inset, alt, e to extrude long face normals, scale it down and move it okay comma again global move it in and then i'll just go darker to there and then we'll put some stuff as well some exhaust here or something no just a hatch here no that doesn't work either so i'll do what should we do okay item set i'll just wing it a little bit now <laughs> That doesn't work either because that one's messed up. GG. I to inset. Alt S to scale. I'll do some armor plating. That, that should do. So I to inset. Alt S to scale. This creates like a panel effect look. And um, we can just do I to inset. E to extrude. S to scale. This is some sort of a housing of something. Uh, I've got 45 seconds. So I'm just going to add some fake details here, I guess. So something under here as well. Here's like a a hatch where you can pick things up, E to extrude, maybe quite a lot there. There we'll do I to inset, Alt S, I to inset, here's some sort of an air intake or something. You don't have air intakes all the time, but never mind. And here is uh, something else, <laughs> I to inset, we'll just do this one, I to inset, E to extrude, S to scale, G, E to extrude, S to scale, these are some like sensors or something. Uh, I to inset, E to extrude, S to scale, uh, G to move, and two seconds. I, E. Okay. It's basically not sounding, but that one. Bah! Why do I always make this sound? There we go. All right, so <laughs> here's the drone in 10 minutes. It's got... You could rig it and ha have these things flap about. I think it looks a little bit comical with these binoculars there. We'll go into Tinker Time now. Since this is the last episode of the 10 minute modeling challenge in this room, I'll just uh, do a little tweak version as well. I think I'm gonna try to change all of this. If I scale, scale it on the x-axis first to zero. Okay, that was no good. Here, scale x zero. And then I'm going to try to move it down now to shiny metal instead. And then I have to scale it down again and move it to here. Is this better or worse? I think I'm going to keep it to the... Well, maybe it's too shiny, actually. So should I bring it to a little, little bit duller here? That one might be good. I think I prefer this. And then we can put some more controls here. From above, it's gonna be vulnerable. So E to extrude, S to scale. And here I can just do right click subdivide. Let's go up with the subdivision a bit like this. And then I'll just do some random configurations here where we can put here some uh, cyan blue lights. So some control points there or something. This one could be red. The little one. Don't press the red button. So that could have been done. And maybe I could have put some like stripes here as well. So GG slides it, remember, very handy. I to inset, Alt S to extrude long face normals. I think I'll indent this slightly. Should we? No, I'll just color it then. So instead here I'll put like a an orange color on it, maybe. There. I don't know if I like that. Control R, S. Control R, S. I think that adds a little bit better look to it. 
And maybe it should have been here as well. Maybe we can put I to inset. Bring that to orange as well. Just some colorization on it. No, that makes no sense either. And I don't think it should be orange there because the thing is, I'll put it on red instead. It's like a mark, a red mark one. And I think just for some, uh, to break up the colorization a bit, I think I'm going to grab these and change the color to something a bit darker. And then I think I might do the blades brighter. So L, L, L. There we go. And let's make those like a really bright metal. There you go. And these lenses, I guess we could we'll do X and do limited dissolve. And then I'll slap them, slap, slap uh, them onto. Hello, where are you? Here, really shiny, but you might not be able to see that anyway. No, can't see it, but it's alright. And should we put some antennas here as well? I think so. So how do we do antennas? Well, you know it. Shift D to duplicate, move it up so we can see it. Right click, subdivide and circle. Scale it down, bring it down again and do move it there. E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale. I might actually keep the lights on the top there, but I will move the colors here to like just some plain gray there. And maybe this one as well. There we go. A to select everything and then just move them to different color here as well. And I think I'm going to do it a bit brighter actually. So there's our antennas. And it's going to broadcast uh, the signals back here now. Should I put more antennas on? Shift D to duplicate. Scale G. Forward a bit. No, that's good. And maybe some sort of an exhaust here as well. I to inset. E to extrude. And then we'll do uh, another round thing here. Shift E to duplicate. Move it. Right click, subdivide, circle, scale it. Bring it, scale it. G to move it down. E to extrude. G to move, rotate, scale. Oh, not scale it down. We'll scale the whole thing down. Scale. These are a bit twisted, but I'm okay with that. Rotate on the X axis. G. And then just gonna do I to inset and E to extrude. S to scale. Control plus. And these will just do non reflective black here. So I don't know if it runs. I guess it's running on uh, <laughs> electricity. But it looks like it might be on petrol, this one. Hey, save the environment with some petrol use here. So, I don't know if that should do. I to inset and E to extrude. And I think that's it. So, with some additional time there, we had a few more things. You could, like, create some claw things as well, maybe. Or some more armor plates. I to inset, alt S to scale. I to inset, Alt S to scale, and here one more thing, I to inset, and Alt E to extrude long face normals, Control plus, and then just do this one A, and then duller and darker. And obviously you'd have to make them spin if you want it in a game. Alright folks, so there we have it, a drone to go with the weekly modeling challenge. If you want to join in on the weekly modeling challenge, if you don't know what to model, if you want to boost your skills and improve yourself, share your work and get some feedback from uh, some Discord members, lovely Discord members, jump into the Infancia Discord server, it's a link right in the description there. Join us, have a chat, uh, talk about all sorts of random things about modeling or game development or watch us play games or share our work when we stream a little bit there. Just go left and right. If you're bored, whatever, just go in there, hang out a little bit with us, and uh, we'll have a, a good time speaking about these type of things. All right, so with that said, I'm going to be summing up this video. I'm going to be uploading this model here to my Patreon page, to the tutorial tier. They will be getting a hold of all of the stuff that I make in the 10-minute modeling challenge. 
So head over there. I do it in batches, so it's not going to come out right away. I'll do it like a, about 10 at a time when I do upload them. So I hope you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, give it a like as well if you don't mind. That'll help me out a bunch. <laughs> Until next video, have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye for now.